Mr. Speaker, the President of the United States. Washington is a deeply divided place these days. Everything that is broken in our country can be fixed. But standing up to Donald Trump isn't the only battle in American politics. The Democratic Party is working through some serious identity issues. The American people are sick and tired of hearing about your damn emails. Thank you. Me too. Thank Bernie you. Sanders lost his party's nomination to Hillary Clinton, but he became a political sensation. Thank you all very much. And now his team is mobilizing to replace the Democratic establishment. The powers of the president shall not be questioned. Sanders supporters are packing town hall meetings and taking on Democrat incumbents. This feels like the most dangerous time we've been in for decades. Creating a sort of tea party of the left, challenging not just Trump, but their own party. Who is our person gonna be? One of the leaders is Larry Cohen. He's a former union president and advisor to Sanders during his run for the White House. Now, he's part of an organization called Our Revolution that is working to shake up the Democratic Party. I sat down with Larry Cohen recently in Washington. Larry Cohen, nice to meet you. Yeah, great to be with you. So you want politics to change. You want the Democratic Party to change, too. We want change, 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 yes, on all fronts. Not just resistance to Trump, but real change, grassroots change, people involved in, an, in a sustainable way, not just in the moment. So last weekend, there was a contest between yeah. the establishment <laughs> Democrats and the Bernie Sanders Democrats, I suppose. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor to present the next chair of the Democratic National Committee, Mr. Tom Perez. So your candidate, Keith Ellison, yeah. he didn't win. Right. But now there seems to be this new arrangement that the, the guy who won, Tom Perez, is saying, yeah. he's, my, he's my deputy. To appoint Keith Ellison, Deputy Chair of the Democratic National Committee. So is everything just hunky-dory now? Well, I mean, we have to, this is about the grassroots and the state level. There's a lot of work to do. Um, Tom is a great guy. I knew him pretty well as Labor Secretary. Um, have to define what does deputy mean. Um, that's so not you defined. want him to have a real voice? Yeah, a real voice. Imagine that. Yes, a real voice, not just uh, something symbolic. So it was pretty bad blood between Hillary Clinton and Bernie S Sanders by the end of the campaign. So, like, where, where are you now? It sounds like... It sounds yeah, like well, Bernie then threw himself into the Hillary Clinton campaign, to be fair. I mean, he knocked himself out in the way that only Bernie can, you know, almost as many road trips as she had, and was pretty sincere about anything to support her and defeat Trump, um, as did Keith Ellison. So Keith Ellison had campaigned for Bernie and switched even before the convention, right before. But are, do you want a Bernie Sanders takeover of the Democratic Party? No, not a Bernie Sanders takeover, but uh, uh, yes, I want... Um, a Democratic Party that's populist, I'm not afraid of that word, that is a little bit messy in the sense that real people, everyday people, feel like it's theirs, and it not wasn't? that it belongs to the elite. Wasn't before? Uh, it probably never was exactly that. So did Democrats blow it? Blow it in what? The, when? the, the election? Yeah, well, I mean, you have to remember, in any other democracy, Hillary Clinton would be the president. She, won, she got 68 and a half million votes. She won by almost 3 million you know, we, we have uh, <laughs> an early democracy is what I call it with this electoral college system and with rural counting much more than urban and, you know, so to be fair, she won in any other country, but this is the only one that matters when you live here. And so, you know, in a certain sense, that would probably be fair to say that, uh, you know, we should have been able to win that election, which means we had to win the election in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan. And that means uh, we have to be clear about working people, whether they're black, brown, or white, uh, about the kind of issues people face every day, what kind of jobs they can get, uh, how they participate uh, at work, what kind of rights they have, what kind of rights they have in the democracy itself, what kind of health care we have, what happens to their kids, what happens to their parents, all the things that people care about everywhere else in the world. We have to be very focused on those kinds of things. So how far do you want to take this? How much change do you want? Are you going to run candidates against incumbent Democrats? Our revolution may well do that, yeah, in many cases. Um, in more cases, we will encourage regular folks get involved at the same time everybody else does. Because, I mean, there's but gigantic But that split the party? Is that no, that's what democracy is. You get involved. You, I mean, the main thing we would do is get people involved, you know, run for school board, run for the city council. 
you know, run against Republicans. But yeah, at times, that democracy means you run to change uh, the party too. So toss out some of the establishment yeah. Democrats. Yeah, at times, yes, absolutely. Some people have compared your movement to a uh, Tea Party of the left. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that there's some similarity there in the sense that, you know, we, this is politics of conviction, of values that's issue-based, that's focused on change. Um, you know, I don't think, you know, none of the values are the same, right? I don't think there's too many values that we would share with them. But, but I think the approach that, um, that, that we need to take politics seriously, that it affects everyday life, and that, that, and that all of us um, can get involved, you know, it's probably a similarity. The Tea Party of the right, the original one, <laughs> um, kind of tore the Republicans apart. You're prepared to face that in your party? No, we're building. So we're getting mi millions Does of people involved. Does everyone that? Well, they may, but I'm just, that, no, honestly, if we took Washington State as an example, we got people involved at the precinct level, who, which in chunks of Washington State were vacant positions, precinct captains. Um, then they got involved in the county level and they worked their way up. And, you know, the involvement is way higher. California, uh, we got tens of thousands of people to vote at the party level, at the grassroots party level that had never voted before. I mean, that's how you get people not only involved in the party, but then involved in the electoral process and also involved in this resistance. Uh, you know, we're fighting back. Some people argue that Donald Trump, during his campaign, spoke to those people, that there was a similarity yeah. between Sanders and Trump. Yeah, I think similarity of words, not deeds. I grew up in a house with my great-grandmother, and she said, I'll watch your feet, not your mouth. So I think uh, the words of Donald Trump sometimes say that, but he has a cabinet of billionaires that we're resisting as well. He doesn't have everyday folks that he's tried to speak to in the campaign. So I think that there's a big gap there. But Will you go after some of the people that's, that supported him? I mean, are they winnable at this Absolutely, point? Absolutely, yeah. And it's not even go after them. We'll encourage them to get involved, run for office. Um, you know, we're in this together. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you go deep into some of those counties in those industrial states, you see people that, you know, should be voting with other working people instead voting for the billionaire and it makes no sense. So, yes, we, we will collaborate with those people in, in many ways, but we will do it in a frame of, of racial justice, of uh, social justice, of environmental justice. We have to learn how we collaborate together. Trump has made a big issue out of uh, how he treats migrants, uh, the immigration, travel. How do you approach that issue? And we why, were at the airports. We, we encouraged people <laughs> to be at the airports. That was, you know, we were one of the major groups that did that. We'll stay not only at the airports, in the streets. We will fight that. The, you know, tolerance is the beginning for any society, um, not pitting people against each other. We will, our revolution has a whole sanctuary program that starts with a congregation or a campus and goes all the way up to a state in states where that's possible, like California. Uh, we're not turning back from any of that. So Trump... Lots of people have said, just stand back, let him do his thing. He won. Um, you're not. No, no, we don't stand back. We stand up. <laughs> but are you making any ground? The guy just won an election. Is it, sure. Did, does his appeal still apply, or is it starting Yeah, to... but I mean, it's a grassroots thing. We've got to go into Indianapolis. We've got to go into, uh, you know, Macomb County, Michigan, outside of Detroit, right near the Windsor. We've got to go into those communities where we live and talk about the things that do unite us. And, uh, and build campaigns around those issues. And, you know, I've always done that, not stopping now. Thanks so much for this. Thank you, Wendy.